Yes, I know. I said I wasn't going to do another video on FreeCAD or this 3-axis CNC. But this, I have to just share this. It seems like every time you go in to do something, it acts differently. You know, I was like, wait a minute, I just did this an hour ago, and now I'm trying to do another one, and the program's acting different. So, sharing what I'm doing here in FreeCAD can uh, maybe just give you guys some insight as to it. Um, also, on making what I, I made my first actual product on it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'll show you what I did, but in making it, uh, took like uh, an hour and a half of actual milling time. So I need to put a fan on the um, little heat sinks that are in the back because they do get pretty hot. Um, what did I make? All right, uh, these little stupid boxes that hold the collet set that I bought. I got real tired of fighting them, trying to open them. Trying to read the teeny little number. What size is that? Get my glasses. So I actually had it machine a ER11 block. I didn't bother engraving it because I need to do more experiments with engraving text, different sizes, different cutters. So I just wrote the sizes in there. But it's nice. Now I, any tool I have, I can just, ah, that one. Speeds it up. The holes are beautiful. You're going to see um, actually the machine doing this particular block. And I have the code, which is nice because, okay, you just let's bang out another one and another one. So you just let it go and you sit back for an hour and a half. So, um, so this video is on FreeCAD, how to model this guy and actually generate the g-code on how to machine it and then i'll show the machining it so sorry for doing this again but this has to be done so enjoy all of a sudden i'm running into new bugs in freecad just trying to do this tutorial first thing you want to create this block so you start in part design Let's see if this works this time. New sheet. And in tasks, you got to create your body. So I've got a body here. Fine. Now I want to start sketching in the XY plane. My grid is set for half inch here. So I want to make a... I'm holding down both mouse, mouse buttons, the left and the right, to do this and the scroll wheel expands and shrinks two point square I want it this is half inch so I want a four by four there's one inch two inches three inches I can't make it huh <laughs> right click and bring it down try it again oh well so all right there there's one inch two three and four inches left click right click I want to lock this point to dimension it um, four by three and a half all right I screwed up four inches four enter there so I'm dimensioned I can close this now I've got my basic little four inch piece of wood next thing you need to do is pad it there are gotchas if you select it it, one thing happens if you don't select it another thing happens I haven't done it enough to remember whether you're supposed to or not so I'm just gonna say here pad at 0.5 again remember to reverse it okay so now I should have a nice little piece of wood top-down view that's the other thing um, you always got to be in one view and again I haven't done it enough to say okay this time I had it tilted and I did it and this happened now I have it not tilted so I'm gonna say not tilted now I want to draw um, the holes for the block so you go back in sketch XY plane again and this is where I was having a problem because it, this is your circle and if I say here to here 
half the grid disappears. Bug. <laughs> right click. Close. I want to get rid of this sketch. Delete. Now, don't select anything. Go into sketch. XY plane again. But this time, start the hole over here. And lo and behold, the grid doesn't disappear. <laughs> That's a cool bug, huh? Just I'm in the mode so I can just create as many holes as I want. I don't care what the size is because I'm going to come back and collect them or correct them, resize them. All right, so I just make a few holes. Right click, I'm out of the hole making. Now, without anything selected, this guy right here is fix the radius. So select the first guy and you got to do inches, 0.2 inches. And remember, look at this, it's got the other double quote or inch mark there. This guy, select it all, 0.2 inch return. <clears throat> so it just stays in this mode, and you can just keep going through all of them, 0.2 inch. I don't know why I have to work for the machine and keep saying inch when I'm in inches, 0.2 inch. It should automatically know. Okay, well, we're almost done here anyway. 0.2 inch, enter, and the last one. All of it, 0.2 inch, enter. Okay, so now I can right click to get out of that uh, fix the radius mode. Now I want to start locking their positions. This is all on grid, so I could actually, if I wasn't, correct every one of those. So I didn't have anything selected. I selected lock and now I can just start hitting the center of all of them and say, okay, these are the positions. This is where I want them. So right click them out of the mode. Again, you can click on any one of them. It's kind of difficult to figure out. This is in the center of this arrow to this arrow. So that's this where this hole is going to be. But in any case, um, there, I've got them all dimensioned and all the radiuses, everything done, close. Now, next thing I need to do is I want to pocket them. Again, top down, hit the pocket here and don't select any of them. And now, uh, now I can pivot it. See, there's a the bug. I don't get it. Why is it doing it that time? Select the sketch. Now pocket it. And it goes in. All right. So if you don't select, it extrudes. If you do select, it goes in. For the ER11s, the 0.4 diameter, I entered in 0.2 because that's a radius. The 0.4 diameter fits the ER11s nicely. And um, 0.370, again, inches, um, is like a nice depth to hold them with. You don't need to reverse it. So, okay, I've got my pockets done, top down. Now I need to um, actually machine these guys. So, hey, you go into path finally. There we go, path. Create a new sheet. Working on the body, it's your only choice. And I've got, again, the extra one thou surface material here because these holes actually start one thou above the surface and not in the surface. So you just say okay to that. Now I need to pick a tool. On these guys, pay close attention when you're creating a tool. It's saying the tool diameter is one eighth but the flat radius, it's radius, not diameter, so you got to cut it in half. I'm going to pick 1 8th, create the tool controller, go into the tool, and for actually doing it, I did like 50 inches per minute to make it kind of faster, because it took an hour and a half to actually make it. RP, this isn't spindle RPM, it's some percentage. I've yet to figure out what it is, but I just enter in a thousand. Kind of a nice speed. Okay, here comes the cool part. What do you think is going to do it? Um, you can do a contour, all kinds of different things, but, and it's going to do it in order. So I'm going to select that, 
hold down the control key. I want it to do that one next, that one, then come down. You can have it go over here, but I just have it going. Looks cool when it goes machining these and coming around. Now you would think normally that it's a pocket from a face. So if I select pocket and this tool and I just say apply, look at the pocket. Let me pivot this and it's a zigzag. I'll zoom in on one. It's not doing a nice job. You'd think spiral would do it. Apply and it doesn't. It's creating this and it actually does look like, uh, let me go top down, there it is. It actually creates a shape that looks like that. So I went through all of them here trying to figure out how in the heck do you do this. Turns out, and I gotta re-angle it because I gotta select all the faces again. Control that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Turns out it's this helix one. It creates a path helix from a base object I mean it's I'm not even on the base all right now you hit apply and look at it now you've got a nice spiral but you're gonna be stuck with a centerpiece so I actually want this thing to go counterclockwise because I want to do climb milling it isn't going to do it is going to do it on the inside and the step over right here if you go down to like 50 percent or it's 60 50 now you hit apply now all the material is gone all you have to do is you set your depths for what you want I want it to start at zero oh, let me do it then discard that I want zero and final depth yeah minus 370,000 step down trash that I want to go down um, I think I think it was it's going to go down in one spiral in 360 as it goes around so as it goes around I want it to go down uh, 0 30 thousandths apply so there's a bunch of lines there for what it's going to do 30 thou uh, I did hit apply there it is all right so I'm set for it so now all you have to do is generate the G-code for it, save it someplace, uh, year 11, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to save it here. Um, when you save it, a little window pops up, there's the code. And now you just transport that or load that into your universal G-code sender, and you're set to go. Actually, I could simulate this. Uh, job, simulate. Okay. I've never done it this way before. Is that it? No tool. Why don't I get a simulator? Probably because I haven't generated the G code. Uh, job G code. Uh, just call it junk for now. NK dot NC. Junk NC. It's going to my desktop. I don't want it in there. All right, so G code's there. Now, what happens? Pressing OK will commit the change to make. I don't know what's going on that I can't do a simulation, but um, interesting. So, this is how you cleanly make pockets, and it came out gorgeous. So I'll show you some of it now. Figured out what I was doing wrong. I kept clicking on this, but when you hover, it's just going to inspect the G-code. The next one down is the simulator here. So you can hit play, and you can just see how it's going to do it. It's like pretty cool. And it does do a final pass. Wow, look at it go. So, still got a problem trying to stop this thing. Stop there, finally stop, cancel. So, okay, so that's how you simulate me screwed up here. Now the lighting isn't that great and I'm hand walking this, but this is the first actual part that I'm making, a collet holder. This guy was pretty easy to make here. So there, there it is in FreeCAD. And this is the guy, oops, busy machining it. And there it is over here. It's gonna 
bore out or 20 holes and then we'll come back and clean up those edges on them. So cool. So there it is going away. I know there's not much light in here, but I'm noticing a lot of dust is getting all over the place. And I'm not sure if the motor fan is blowing down because there's holes underneath there. I hope it's not sucking up dust. So I'll find out after this thing is done. And I'm noticing, I think the camera can see the nut tweaking left and right. I know that's at least a half a foul, maybe a foul, because I've made the motor step 1,000. It barely rotates, so. Um, and I did oil way in the beginning all these guys and I, that may have been a mistake because that's just sticking to them the worst would be the lead screw what else am i noticing oh the little heat sinks on the back this guy's been going for almost an hour and it's getting pretty hot back there so i had paused this thing uh feel them again and they're getting the adhesive yeah they're ooh, yeah that's getting pretty hot the adhesive uh, is getting gooey because of the heat. And I did pause it, like I said, and then used freeze spray to cool them all down here for a bit and then go again. I forgot which one's which, but they're all... It's, that's pretty hot to the touch, so they're getting there. I think I'll probably wind up pausing this again. Is it, eh, I don't know. I need to put a fan back there is what I need to do and just have it blowing on those things, some small fan running off this power supply which unfortunately is big. This was 20, yeah, 24 volts. So uh, I think there was, a, yeah, there is a plug for a 12 volt out and I just need a little teeny fan which I've got. So just kind of some of the observations so far.